Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Media Trudor, and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, where last time we took on the most badass assassin on the whole of Terrace, and we murdered her, and I stole her armor. It was great, but that wasn't really that important. What's important is we helped out with a dance routine that was... That was marvellous. That's been the highlight of the game for me so far. So uh, today we're going down into the Undercity, but not before another exciting episode of Let's Talk All About The Things That John Got Wrong. And appropriately enough, would you believe this episode of The Things That John Got Wrong? Yeah, um, it pertains to my perception. But like, you know, on this occasion, it's not my fault. In fact, in many ways, uh, my problem here is... Uh, I'm too perceptive. I know that's very rare, but it is. So let's talk about what usually happens uh, when I, like, you know, enter a room, which is I kick in the door and I say, this is a sticker. Give us all your money. And there might be some black Volca there and they'll go, you'll never take us alive. And then, like, you know, I go, pew, 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 pew. And then they go, like, pew, 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 pew. And then, like, you know, I murder them because that's how it goes. And, like, there's 10 million laser bolts floating about. Except there aren't. This here is a bit of a misunderstanding because... Uh, all of this, none of this is real, all right? I'm not actually in Terrace. I know you know that because it's a video game. But, like, seriously, more than usual. Because I'm currently sitting around a table playing D&D. All this in front of you. This is just a great big Star Wars LARP made out of ones and zeros. You see, when I fire my main gun, there may be multiple blaster bolts flying about. But, like, there's not actually multiple blaster bolts flying about. That's just for show. All that's actually happening is uh, there's an attack roll. Okay, so we roll the dice and we see whether one of my attacks lands. How many actual blaster bolts are flying around the room is irrelevant, which I didn't realise. I thought sniper shot was garbage. So I was only firing like, you know, one shot rather than several. But no, that's completely irrelevant. That's just for show. The only exception being rapid shot, where rather than doing one attack roll, I get to do two, which is actually really exciting. So like, you know, doubles the amount of damage coming out of my gun, except it kind of doesn't. Because, uh, okay, I wasn't able to verify this, but some people who seem to know the game pretty well were indicating that, yeah, your abilities uh, only apply to, like, you know, your primary weapon in your main hand. Your secondary weapon in your offhand, uh, that doesn't really, like, do anything aside from its basic attack over and over. So, uh, yeah, basically, when I'm attacking with two guns and I'm using rapid shot, I'm rolling three attack dice. All right. So my left weapon is only generating a third of my total damage output, in fact less than that, because one, it's a weaker weapon, and two, it's less likely to hit. So that got me to thinking, maybe I shouldn't be relying on my offhand to be doing damage at all. Instead, as that's not going to be doing much damage, it's going to be hitting less often, and generally it's not as useful, I should be putting something more, you know, supporty in my other hand. So let's use another trick I was thinking of here, which is, yeah, right now I'm down the lower city. But if I, like, you know, return to hideout at this exact moment in time, then not only do I get myself the free heal, but actually, I get a free shot. Because Larim's right bloody here. So here we go. A basic blaster pistol is doing between 1 and 6 at a range of 23 meters, critical only on 20. But this sonic pistol right here... It's only doing a tiny bit less damage, but my other hand's hardly doing damage anyway. But instead, it can damage my opponent's dexterity. Now, if I'm damaging my opponent's dexterity, that's actually really, really damn good. Because then, if their dexterity is going down, their defense is going down, it's easier to hit them with my main weapon. And at the same time, I'm still doing some damage, so... I don't know if this is a good idea, but I feel like this is maybe a good way to be starting to, uh, to think about the game here, which is uh, damage dealing in my main hand, then some form of, like, you know, support gun in the other. So, uh, I'm gonna buy this and give it a go. I also completely missed, by the way, I picked up a, um, hang on, where are you? Yes, a heavy blaster off one of the, um, the Volcar bosses. Sorry, I got a bit, um, you know, picking up loot happy. And didn't realise that was actually, you know, a pistol. And thus, of interest to me. So, same range as my existing pistol. 1 to 8. Which is, yeah, presumably therefore, on average, the same as Karth's pistol. Because 2 to 7 and 1 to 8, on average, you're going to be getting the, uh, the same damage uh, over time. So, okay. No other benefits, to be honest. So, yeah. If I need something for my second hand, assuming this is... Yes, this is balanced. So if I need something for my second hand, that there, that could work nicely. But I'm going to give a go, at least, to Masonic Pistol Plan. It's going to be great. 
Oh, yeah, look at that thing. That thing looks really cool. That's really nice. I like that a lot. Also, while I'm at base, yeah, that's um, a prototype vibro blade I put the vibration cell on. Yeah, the energy projector that uh, Dia gave me, which specifically said, hey, this is gonna make, you know, weapons do energy damage. But like, if I install it, it says uh, it's doing bonus physical damage. Well, it makes it better, and like, you know, most people don't have shields, and if they do, Karth has still got like, you know, a long sword, so screw it, we'll just tie that to this thing too. Right, back to where we were, no, not that way, this way, because yes, I've got the papers, got them off, uh, Gadenfex, so uh, we should be able to walk straight past down to uh, the Undercity, and, uh, now we're getting into territory I'm a bit, uh, less familiar with, because by the time we got to the Undercity, first time I played this, yeah, I was pretty much just uh, rushing straight through to try and find the disease. So uh, we're kind of in unknown territory here. Oh, bloody hell, Karth. Now is not the cocking time. Look, I suppose I could use someone to talk to. I'm just not used to it. And I don't know why you're so interested, but here goes. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respected the most. Saul. Okay, do I know who that is? You don't. I thought everyone did. But Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier, and I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. Sorry, to be 100% clear, while you were serving in the Republic, a Republic Admiral came up to you and said, Well, the Republic's losing. I guess we better find somewhere else to be in this war between the Republic and the Sith. And you, like, had literally no idea that he might be not entirely loyal to the Republic. You're not the sharpest bulb in the shed, are you, Caden? I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. Okay, so he's gonna be a mid-game boss. Gotcha. So, uh, is that it then? Or do you have another layer to your personal tragic backstory that we're gonna need to get to in ten and a half minutes? No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. All right, ten and a half minutes. Got it. Right, as I was saying, back down to the Undercity. Here you go, good sir, I think you'll find my papers are in order. And with that down, to the Undercity, we go. You there, Upworlder! Anyone using this elevator has to pay the toll. Yeah, this is our elevator. If you use it, you gotta give us something. I don't believe this planet. Even the beggars are trying to shake us down. Five credits! That's what it costs to use our elevator. Five credits! Okay, this is literally the elevator that the armed Sith patrols use to come in and out of this area. Because, like, you know, they're blockading it at the top and people with orders pass through. This is a bad scam, alright? If we'd been Sith, we wouldn't have even bothered speaking to you. We'd have just shot you. This is a really, really bad idea, but, uh, okay. How do we get round you? Uh, right now there's no- ooh. I mean, I was saying I need to be more of a dick. I'm gaining too many goody two-shoes points. Alright, and that that's not, you know, consistent with me shooting lightning out of my hands. I will subscribe to whichever ethical philosophy lets me shoot lightning out of my hands. So, I mean, five credits is nothing. Then again, I don't really like being shaken down. It's the principle of the thing. So, okay, let's even get some details. How desperate are you? right now, because I'm guessing to try and shake down, you know, the elevator the armed patrols use, uh, you gotta be pretty desperate. We are the outcast, banished and reviled by those who dwell above. Here in the filth and darkness, we claw out a wretched existence, scavenging and begging just to survive long enough to see another wretched day. This is our village. We live here in the Undercity. You have to pay us Five credits for using our elevator. You know what? I've got to say, I admire his dramatic performance. 
All right. He's not just give us the five credits so we're going to stab you. He is full on, this is our village. And if you do not pay the toll, then we shall be forced to engage in fisticuffs with you. Yes, that is right. For I am the evil shakedown man. I like him. I like the performance. It's great. So, uh, no, not extra money. Dear oh flippin' dear. And, uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, we're doing it. Except, hang on. Um, if I do this, this might go down badly with, like... Everyone else here. Okay, I'm refusing, but maybe, like, you know, I don't alienate myself from the rest of this society. Please have pity on us. We have nothing. All we ask is a few credits to make our lives easier. Seriously, I hope this guy got an Oscar for his performance. This is amazing voice work. And uh, no, you know what? I'm gonna be a dick. Screw you. Let's get some dark side points. Run, my brother! Flee this one's wrath! Go on, you two. Get out of here! I'm sorry about that. Those two beggars give everyone in the village a bad name. We aren't all like that, you know. Most of us are good people. I'm sure you are, miss. It's just too bad your little welcoming committee is here to give people a bad first impression. Okay, so... Uh... I don't seem to have annoyed the locals. In fact, they don't seem to like those guys either. Despite their amazing performance. Like, seriously, give them the Oscar right now. So, uh, let's be polite, get ourselves introduced, figure out what the flip's going on here. My name is Shalina. You're from the Upworld, aren't you? I've... I've never seen it. I was born here in the Undercity. Is it as nice as they say up there? I mean, it's sort of... It's okay, I suppose. It's like, you know... Uh, it's a city planet. There's other ones. Uh, apparently it's fallen on slightly uh, hard times. But to be honest, I'm guessing like you're living in those hard times. Maybe it's still nice up there. So uh, I'm going to say it's nothing special so you don't feel bad. Not to you, I suppose. But you're probably used to its beauty by now. I've never been to the surface, but sometimes I think I can see it in my dreams. The sun, the sky, the stars. It all sounds so... so... So wonderful. Gendar, the leader of our village, tells me I should spend more time trying to improve things down here and less time dreaming about something I can never have. Maybe he's right. You probably think I'm a fool, having dreams of a place I've never even seen. But when I was little, Rukil used to tell me stories of what it was like up there. Okay, we got some people we need to figure out, important locals. So, uh, was that like Gendar you just said, uh, your village leader, and uh, some other guy, Rukil? Rukio's the oldest man in the village. The kids call him Rukil Wrinkleskin, but he's a kind man. He used to tell me the greatest stories when I was a little girl. I still like to listen to his tales about the promised land, even though I know they're just legends, but it helps to make the Undercity seem less... less dark somehow. Okay, so... Uh, promised land. I'm guessing this is like, you know, a, a myth of uh, going up to the surface, but... Yeah, the stories might suggest maybe he wasn't born down here like she was. Maybe he actually has, you know, a first-hand experience. It's it's just a story to make little children smile. Rukil believes in it, though. Sometimes I can almost believe it myself, but then I look around and see the ugly truth. I guess we have to make the best of what we have, though. If you really want to learn more about the Promised Land, you should speak to Rukil. Okay, so yeah, by the looks of the ground around her, we are now literally on the ground. This is a planet that's been built up, but like, presumably the entire planet can't be built up, if only because there has to be like, you know, bits of water or something. So, I mean, in theory, if you just walked far enough, you might find an area which was, you know, not so built up where you could actually see the sky. But, okay, point me in the right direction, might go and have a chat to him. Okay, let's see what we got here. So we got ourselves, aha, a doctor. Wait, Upworlder, you can't go through this gate. There is too much danger and suffering beyond. For your own sake, turn back. Oh, I love how everyone here is so dramatic. Maybe this is like one of the early symptoms of the Ratgul disease. Like, you know, first you start getting really dramatic in your delivery of all your lines. And then, you know, two weeks later, you're a zombie. But yeah, I suppose while I'm here, um, what precisely are we talking about behind the gates? The villagers infected with the Rutgore disease are quarantined beyond this gate. It's only a matter of time until they transform into horrible creatures that would destroy us all. So you just lock them away in a cage? For the sake of the village, we have to keep the infected ones locked away. 
and when they finally do transform into rock ghouls, we'll let them destroy each other. Oh, okay, that's... that's pretty dark, actually. So... Is there any way I might be able to, you know, help? Well, I'm not really that... well, actually, you know what? Me and Caden are both okay at medicine, but, like, is there anybody who might be able to assist with this? Nothing can be done for the infected villagers. Even the serum to counteract the Ragghul disease wouldn't be any use now. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into rat ghouls and attack them at any moment. Okay, um, any chance if I was willing to go through, uh, you might be able to... Well, then again, presumably you don't... You don't have the cure, right? Because you're the outcast and the cure seems to be very rare and whatever. So, I mean, would you mind if I wanted to take the risk? All right, here we go. Let's, like, you know, get these guys... Oh. Please, help us! We're infected with the rat ghoul disease. At any moment, we could... Uh, no! Okay, I think I might have made a... I think I might have made a mistake. Oh, that was... It really is the dramatic disease, isn't it? Okay, so... I think I might have made a mistake here. Um... Caden, would you like to, like, you know, just get inside and start, like, hitting them? Oh, there's three of them. Okay, I'm just going to run back a little bit. Um, oh, no, 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 keep running, keep running, keep running, I'm... Yeah, I think we might have made a mistake, actually. Because now I'm... Ooh, now I'm shooting them with my special sonic gun. Oh, I like that, it goes wibble, wibble, wibble. Um, yes, I feel like we've made a mistake. Also, we've opened the gate and doomed the entire, doomed the entire village. Uh, okay, just get around the back of you. And actually, Caden is... He's sort of doing okay, and... Well, we're not dead! Okay, well, we are dying of poison. Um... Am I still dying of poison, by the way? I mean, presumably I've got, like, you know, more more health or whatever. Are we... are we good? Okay, I'm still losing health, but because we're not in combat, Bang Blitzman's got back up again, so... I mean, technically we've defeated these guys. Um, how are you guys feeling over there, by the way? Oh, I think he's fine now. Lovely. Okay, fortunately, this isn't, you know, a combat place. So this is all fine. So, okay. How do you guys feel, by the way? You know, just, just sending Caden first. Hello. Do you feel better by any chance? Please, please, you have to help us. We beg you. We don't want to end up like the others. Please help us. We can't end up like them. Okay, she's not reading her lines so dramatically. So she's only at stage one of infection. There might still be a chance. Well, nothing we could do until we've actually, like, you know, got the cure. Um, to be honest, fair play. You were right. Some of them did turn into monsters, yes. Okay, elsewhere in the village and we have got ourselves Rukil! Right, let's catch up with you and learn about the promised land, which is presumably just, like, you know, a, a bit of land that hasn't been so heavily, you know, built over. You... You come from the world above. Is this the time of destiny, then? Is this a portent of the salvation of my people? Or merely another false sign to mislead us from the path? Are you the herald of prophecy? The beacon to guide us through the darkness? Or are you merely another harbinger of shattered dreams and unfulfilled promises? Be careful. This one might be crazy enough to be dangerous. Speak to me, Upworlder. Tell me what fate you unleash upon us. Salvation or damnation? Speak, Upworlder. I beg you. Okay, he's already doing the dramatic reading of his lines. Put him in the cage with the others. Okay, what else are we supposed to... What are we supposed to be doing here? No! No, no, no! Be dramatic straight back! Then again, maybe they'll put me in the cage. Gotta be careful about that. Look, if he wants to speak in all drama terms, that is fine. All right. I like the sound of being a beacon of light, though, to be honest, I like being a harbinger of destruction, too. That sounds fun. That's got to be worth some dark side points. Once, I was honored for my wisdom. But over time, the villagers fell away from the true path. Eventually, there was only a single apprentice who followed me. And now she is gone, too. Ah, but any chance is that the, um, uh, the woman at the beginning? Because she seemed to kind of believe in what you were saying. My apprentice is lost. I sent her out into the Undercity to find... Well, I cannot tell you. Not yet. Sadly, 
my apprentice has not returned. Please, Upworlder, will you help an old man? Will you seek out my apprentice in the Undercity? Her name is Malia. I must know of her fate, whatever it may be. I must know what she found. Okay, I'm willing to do this, but I would like to know, you know, more about the uh, promised land or whatever. Finding her may be difficult. Malia could be anywhere in the Undercity. But if you will find her, I will know you to be our true savior. Only then can I reveal my secret knowledge to you. Okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking secret knowledge and harbingers of destruction and shattered dreams. This is this is great. I want to be the harbinger of shattered dreams. Let's make that happen. Oh, and very convenient, literally across the flipping road, there's Gendar. Greetings, Upworlder. We rarely see your kind here in the Undercity. I find it strange that so many of you have come down from the surface recently. No offense, but I can see why people normally avoid this place. Gator. Why have you come into this dark and sunless place? Is there something you need of me or my village? I will help you however I can. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Yes, other upworlders, and we know why he's here. It's a bit, uh, yeah, a bit mean. It seems to be, oh, there's Kaden. Kaden, you're getting in the way of one of the villagers, Kaden. Yeah, it seems to be like either they're born down here, in which case their um their ancestors committed a crime up above, or they themselves committed a crime and got sent down here. So uh, it seems to be like, you know, a punishment to live in this part of the world, which is, uh, you know, bad idea. There's like, you know, a big foundation right behind me. Like, don't send the people who are one criminals and two annoyed at you down to the place where the foundations are. They're going to do some bad things to your foundations, no dear. Um, like... Being really bad at spatial awareness isn't going to be one of the uh, the symptoms of Rat Ghoul, is it? Because if so, I'm sorry, you've got a bigger problem than I thought. Our village has seen many visitors from the surface recently. Armored troops, swoop gang members, mercenaries. They come to search our sunless world. They're even searching the sewers. Alright, so yes, I'm looking for one in particular. Pretty distinctive, because uh, Twi'lek. Yes, I have seen this Twi'lek many times, though I've never spoken to her. She and her Wookiee companion often pass through our village on their way to explore the sewers. And yes indeed, sewers, alright. We got ourselves a lead for where we're going in uh, in that regard. And uh, anything you might be able to help me out with, uh, rat ghouls. Like, best way to take them out or something. The rat ghouls are monsters, hideous mutations who feast on the flesh of our villagers. Their diseased jaws can infect those they attack, transforming the victim into one of those abominations. We know of no cure for the disease, and for the good of the village, we must banish any who become infected, lest they transform and turn on us. You know, me and Caden were both bitten, like, 20 seconds ago. I really hope that's not bad, by the way, because we both were, yes. Aha, and don't forget, because yeah, it's a bit easy to uh, bit easy to miss when you're running the game in 1080p. Down over here, I'm ready to level up, though. Okay, thing I saw in the comments, so... Uh, Apparently at some point someone's going to realise, you know, an administrative error was made and say, Oh, it turns out you're a Jedi after all. Sorry about that. Here's a lightsaber, which point I'll be tossing that away because I don't know how to bloody use that thing with strength of eight. But uh, yes, that's going to change my class. So uh, right now, I'm a scoundrel. When I actually change, I'm not going to be a scoundrel anymore. That's going to change the abilities uh, that I'm like getting uh, for free. So if you're really good at this game, people like hold off levelling up because they want to be like, you know more Jedi and less whatever their starting class is. But like, it's not like it's bad to be leveling up because if I became a Jedi at like level two or whatever, by just holding off leveling up at all, then all that would mean is I'd have less scoundrel abilities. But I quite like my scoundrel abilities. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I'm just gonna keep leveling up as far as I need to. If this means I don't have an optimal character, that's fine. I kind of like some of my scoundrelly stuff. So let's go up to uh, level five. If for no other reason, then yeah, that's going to get me uh, more health, which I could definitely do with, actually, yes. Oh, and this is a good level. Skills and feats. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Another four here, so... Yeah, if I want this to be moving in the right direction, that's going to be taking... It's going to take basically all the skill points I've got just to be moving these skills in the right direction. My stealth, my persuade my security. I mean, I could hold off on stealth, but then, like, my awareness is not 
great. I feel like I can only really afford uh, to be getting, like, you know, uh, three skills uh, up to uh, maximum. Especially as uh, this one is... That one's expensive. That one's really expensive. So I could get Treat Injury up to uh, four. But to do that, I'd have to be giving up on uh, Security. Yeah, let's get Security up to seven. Treat Injury at four. Persuade, just keep that maxed out. Because I'm also getting, like, plus two to that off my Charisma. So... Uh, that's probably okay, but awareness we might kind of have to give up on and let someone else do the awareness business, potentially anyway. Then again, treat injury. That's really expensive. I could get awareness up to four right now because treat injury is expensive. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. That's fine. So if I'd like, you know, become a Jedi already, I like wouldn't have got that, but like... I like that. Admittedly, I know I've not been using it so far, but like, I think I've come up with a good strategy if I could get the right tools, which is a sneak attack isn't actually just for like, you know, going into stealth mode, shooting people in the back, all of that good stuff. It's any attack against an eligible opponent, and that includes people who are stunned. That's what it said on the concussion grenade description. So uh, as a result of that, yeah, potentially, this could actually be really, really flipping powerful. Because now I'm gaining between 3 and 18 points of extra damage uh, per attack. So on average, that's going to be like, you know, 11 or thereabouts. So uh, if I stun someone, then I run up into their face and I shoot them with a rapid shot. That's three attack rolls, three separate attacks, two off my main gun, one off my extra. All of which can presumably therefore do, uh, yeah, flipping 11 on average extra points damage. So uh, 33 total if they were all to hit on top of the actual damage off the attack. That could be huge. Like, I just need to find a way to stun enemies. If I can stun enemies, I can do ludicrous burst damage off sneak attack. So, okay, this is this is good right here. Though I've also got a remaining feat. Okay, hang on. I could get my two-weapon fighting up to level two. So, yeah, right now it is minus six, minus six. And also with balanced weapon, yeah, with balance minus four, minus six. Take this up to here... And that goes up to uh, minus two, minus four. Okay, so basically plus two uh, in terms of my attack rolls uh, on both my hands uh, going forward. That's... that's pretty tempting. I mean, I like having two guns and going pew pew pew. Going pew 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 is fun. I feel like that's got to be the better option. Though I might be upgrading rapid shot down the line. That's certainly true. So add that feat... And boom, and accept, and uh, oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. But most importantly of all now, uh, oh my, plus five, uh, plus three. So now if I actually take this weapon off, hang on, that's only like a difference of two. Oh, that's huge. Okay, yes, I've just made some excellent decisions. Hey, you ain't from the village. You're from the upworld, ain't you? Yes, you've got credits, I bet. Watch yourself. There's something slimy about this guy. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. My name's Saigir. I run a little salvage shop here. You want to buy something from my store? I got some good deals. Okay, I don't want to 100% trust this guy, but... Yeah, how would you run a store down over here where everyone seems to be barely scraping by and the scavengers constantly passing through and whatever? Like, what precisely are you, you know, selling? If a villager comes across any useful salvage in the Undercity, they bring it to me. Every so often, members from the lower city gangs come down to trade for the salvage. They'll exchange food and medicine for engine parts, old blasters and the like. Sometimes they even give me credits if I have some really good stuff. I mean, okay. Let's see the inventory, see if he's got anything good. Uh, though, yeah, I reckon some of this stuff might be overpriced. Like Caden says, I don't trust him. Oh, but hello, sexy. Okay, I know we were just saying we don't really want to trust this guy, but he's selling... Uh, he's selling one a hell of a gun. I mean, that's... that's nice. That's really nice. So, uh, that is balanced, uh, which is great, but... I mean, that's... that's good. That's real good. And I can afford it. I mean... 
I'm a little bit suspicious that this shot was introduced with, hey, I wouldn't trust this guy not to be trusted. And then immediately afterwards, he's got a really good pistol at what seems to be actually a fairly reasonable price. So I don't know if this thing's going to turn out to be useless or like break or something, but I mean, the game says that's the damage. That is better than, you know, a calf's blaster. What else have you got, my good man? Because, okay, you might turn out to be pretty good. And a scope, too. So, uh, presumably... Hang on, is this thing... Is this thing upgradable? It doesn't say so. So, yeah, does it have to say upgradable to be upgradable? Oh, and he's selling cards, too. He's selling cards. To be honest, yeah, I'm having that. That's pretty good. I'm having all the negatives. Uh, they're pretty cheap. And there's another scope. I don't know whether I need that. Because I don't know whether this thing can even be upgraded. Screw it, I'm having it. I'm having it. I'm gonna regret this. This guy is robbing me, but I'm having it anyway. This is... Yep, yeah, screw it. Buy it. Beautiful. This is... This is gonna be great. It's probably not. It's gonna just, you know, fall apart in my hands. Right, put the heavy pistol into play right now, and... Uh, I'm sorry, because you don't actually stun, you just actually, you know, lower the, uh, the dexterity. Like, you could lower Dexterity a couple of times and make no difference, because Dexterity might be able to go down one, but, like, the modifier of Dexterity doesn't change. You might need to actually have that effect, like, multiple times, and it's only got a 25% chance of doing... No, it's not 25%, it's... Okay, uh, the DC of 14. So, like, the enemy has to roll the 14 off? Okay, need to look into the DCs. But, Calf Blaster, in the other hand... Oh, now we're kicking ass! Okay, now we're going to be kicking a, a lot of ass. Oh yeah, look at that. Ready to flip and go. That gun is golden massive. I love it. Hurry, Hendar. Hurry. I can hear it coming. He'll never make it. He's doomed. <sighs> I told him he was a fool to leave the village. He will make it. Run, Hendar, run! Open the gate. Quickly. There isn't much time. Uh, I... I can't. The raccoons are too close. The mutants will kill him if you don't open the gate. And if I open the gate, they'll kill us all. No, you can't do this. It isn't fair. Please, make him open the gate. Hindar will die if he doesn't. I can't open the gate. Not while the raccoons are so near. I'm going to be honest, I think it's too late for him. He was already doing a fairly dramatic reading of his lines there. I think he's already going to be infected. But if there's only one, I took out three just a second ago. I think we might be okay, but then again, dark side points. Nope, screw it, I'll go and kill them, it's fine. He might be important, he might give me a reward or something. You'd risk your life for a stranger? <laughs> You're brave, Upworlder. I'll open the gate for you, but you gotta be quick. In a few seconds, I must close and lock it again. And out we go. Caden, you better be coming too, damn straight. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, um... Could we, like, you know, Kaden. Kaden, Kaden, Kaden. Please start attacking this guy with all your power attacks. And as for me, I'm just going to be going with a point-blank range rapid shot. Now, let's just keep an eye on how much we're hitting, because it should be much more now. And... Uh... Oh, flip me! Oh, oh, flip the flip out of... Oh, then he went for me. Okay, I'm a bit poisoned right now, but bloody hell did you see that? That was... That was really good. In fact, those numbers were so high... That couldn't have been my hit, right? Okay, we need to test this, but I feel like I might be on to a winner here. Anyway, before I drop dead of poison, I'll be taking your money and your praise now, thank you. And let me back in to the village, your decks. I can't thank you enough for saving me, Upworlder. If I had anything but these rags on my back, it would be yours. But we have nothing. I still have you, Hendar. That's all I need. Let's go back to the village. I'm going to be honest, I was hoping I might be able to demand, you know, the rags off him. But apparently not. Okay, how about you, Hester? Have you got any money or anything? No, can't speak to her at all. Dear, oh, flippin' dear. Right, so I just did that out of the goodness of my own heart. Well, that's no bloody use at all. Bloody hell. Okay, seriously, I'm getting too close to a stupid light, you know, poncy cloud I'm standing on, and I don't like it. Okay, now, a very important thing here... Once I step outside and I verify we're properly outside, because... Caden, you absolute coward, get out here with me. As soon as the actual gate locks, am I officially in, you know, a combat area? 
or can I still go back home when I want to? No, I can still return to hideout. This is like, you know, overworld or streets or whatever. So it's fine. I can still nip back to my hideout in order to top up my health whenever I want to. Good. But I'm guessing once I hit, like, you know, the sewers, uh, that's going to change. So, uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. What have we got to do? We've got Please, to find some... Oh. help me. Nobody else is going to help me. Even the Bex won't help me. But I can't just leave him there. He's my friend. You'll help me, won't you? Oh, Flip, this is this is going to be a rescue mission for the Wookiee. Yes, I need a Wookiee. Like, admittedly, I have been forcing, you know, a gunslinger to act as my frontliner. I've got some good swords now. Oh, yeah, a double sword wielding Wookiee. That's got to be the thing. Yes, lead on. This is now my top priority. They were waiting for us. Gamorian slave hunters. We didn't even have a chance to run. Big Z threw himself at him and then roared for me to run. I, I took off. I figured Zalbar would be right behind me. But there were too many of them. He couldn't get away. They're going to sell him to a slaver. I just know it. Okay, so you're a terrible friend, but, uh, yes. Okay, any chance the, the Bex would help you? Because it feels like they like you, so why not ask for them? I can't ask Gadden. He's always telling me not to go into the Undercity. He says it's too dangerous with the Rakuls and Gamorians and all. He'll never send his Bex down there. Okay, fair enough. So though he would be sympathetic, he wouldn't risk his own people because he's gathering them up for an assault against the surface, which is uh, fair enough, to be honest. That makes perfect sense. So, uh, okay. If I get Zalbar back, then you can help me with the Volcar base. Me and you, we can do a deal right now. It's a deal. As soon as we get Big Z back, I'll show you a way into that Volker base. Now come on! We have to find Zalba before they sell him to slavers, or worse! Do you know where he's being kept? The Gamorians make their camps in the sewers. I bet that's where we'll find Zalbar. And that's where I'll show you the secret entrance into the Volker compound. Alright, we've got ourselves a mission! Okay, now we've actually got a full team here. Let's figure out what's going on. Apparently she needs to be uh, leveled up right now too, so... Okay, 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 okay. Because it's important I know what skills you guys have gotten. Dear, oh, flipping dear. No, 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 no. Give her flipping armor. Much better right there. Good, good, good. And she's also got basic blast pistol. Well, that doesn't help at all, does it, mission? Ah, though she can stealth. Okay, so she's a scoundrel. Got it. I feel like the game, like, you know, really expects you to be going for the sword users because uh, the first two companions you get are, yeah, two-handed gunslinger and uh, also gunslinger scoundrel. Like, the game really expects you to be going for the swords for some reason. And she's got intelligence. Okay, now this is what we needed. Yes, she is uh, good on the dexterity, pretty good constitution, not so good at the charisma, but smart. That's plus two to all of the intelligence skills. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is uh, this is spot on and uh, good at computers. Uh, amazing at demolitions. Mission, welcome to the flipping team. Me and you, we can be friends. Any chance you're good at good at stealth? Awareness is uh, pretty good uh, right now. Don't worry about persuade. Uh, repair is not the best. Okay, need someone else to still do uh, the repairing. But this is pretty much perfect, like, uh, computer use and demolitions. Oh, this is, yes, spot on. Because bloody dum-dum over here, Caden, he just doesn't really seem to be good at, like, any skills at all. He's just not very good at this sort of thing. And just like me, she's got those sneak attacks, so, uh, okay, potentially me and her could be ridiculous damage dealers. If we could just get a stun on somebody, then... Basically, we just open up with ludicrous sneak attacks times 10 bajillion. And yeah, she's got all the same skills as me, but she's got dueling and doesn't have dual wielding. Oh, but she does come with her own special vibro blade. That's fun. So that is at 2 to 11, which is uh, pretty good. Don't really need that, to be honest. So uh, ignore the blaster pistol. Where's that heavy blaster? There it is. Right, you can have one of them. That's pretty good. It's still a pistol. She's still good with it. Plus six. Chance to hit. Don't put anything in her, uh, yeah, offhand. Give her whichever's the best energy shield. There you go. And I'm not sure we've got anything else we can actually really uh, give you. Though, uh, Caden, any chance you like Mission's Vibro Blade? Because that's two to 13 or five to 14. What's this, by the way? One to 10. 
Not great though, hang on, no. Not 1 to 10, because uh, 3 to 12. No, cancel that. 2 to 13. Are you gaining benefits? So hang on, that's 2 to 13. If I change that out for that, that's 3 to 12. I mean, that seems better, to be honest. So, okay, you can now just be using double vibro blades. That's a okay. I mean, to be honest, yeah, 2 to 13 and 3 to 12 is going to be... It's going to be the same, on average. But he's going to look cooler with two vibro blades, all right? Okay, everybody happy? Everybody got guns? Sorry, your gun doesn't seem to have uh, loaded a texture. But I'm sure that's all absolutely fine. Let's not worry about it. You've now got two short swords, which is probably good for some reason as well. Back yeah. over to... Uh, me and yeah, Mission can now, uh, she can pick up mines, like, super easy. And her awareness is also six, so, okay, my awareness was, uh, my awareness is currently uh, four being boosted plus three because of associated wisdom. Okay, maybe I should leave all of this to her, because actually, hang on, don't you have a, uh, you've got a level up to do right now, great. So, attributes and skills, uh, what do we want to get you moving up in the right direction? To be honest, if I want you to be like, you know, backing me up with skills, I could just give you more intelligence or dexterity. Okay, I'm going to give you a bit more intelligence. We're just going to see whether intelligence 16, you know, works. Because you might be a very good skill supporty person. And on account of that, yeah, five skill points. Good, 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 good. So let's just keep this moving in the right direction. I want demolitions to be maxed. I want your awareness to be maxed. That is uh, very, very positive indeed. I don't need your security. I could get your... That's expensive. Repair's really expensive. Let's get this up to... Apparently that's capped at that point. Dear, I flip in dear. Hang on, if I undo this. No, even then, I can't. So, uh, yeah. Let's just get you being my demolitions, uh, awareness, and computer use person. Don't worry about stealth. That's all absolutely fine. If we need stealth, then uh, I'll just go out on my own. It's going to be a-okay. Though then again, I've not really got anything else to spend this on, aside from security, which I'm already doing, so I guess you can have some stealth anyway, sure. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, my main priority right now is replace Caden with someone who's actually, like, you know, good with swords. So, uh, I think they said, uh, they said there was an entrance to the northeast and northwest, hang on, was it northeast and southeast? I forget where they said the entrances were, but, like, let's just, you know, check around, uh, see what we can flip and find, because uh, uh, there's gonna be other stuff dotted about here, including just rubble. Okay, there's some free stuff, and... Right, well, I found the sewers. Good, 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 good. That's where we're going first. Let's go... I didn't even mean to go in there, but I did, so that's nice. So, okay, in we go, and... Uh, all right, I think we know what we're doing at this point. This here, this one's up to you, mission. All right, get in over there, sort it out. So, this should be a-okay, because... Uh, all right, let's just verify that I know what's going on here, precisely, because I probably don't. So, in we go, look out for rat ghouls! Okay. So, basically, Caden, you're just going to go and whack them with your beating stick for the time being. Everybody else just needs to uh, run forward for a moment. So, just wait right there. So, now we just want to open fire like crazy. Now, what abilities do you have, by the way? You've got yourself snipe and normal. So, you may as well just uh, normal, to be honest. So, go back over to me for this. And activate. Oh yeah, here we go. Now we're getting into the big stuff. Now we're starting to cut them down. No, no, no. None of that. Just rapid shot times 10 million. So this should be... Oh, they're coming for me and they're dead. Okay, I've accidentally come up with a build that seems to be sort of working. This is very surprising. I didn't even take any damage during that, I don't think. Right, just go through the doors. There's various doors in the way. Caden's going to go first. Everyone's... Aha! Gamorians. This is precisely what I wanted to say. So, I mean, we could let them come to us. Uh, to be honest, there's no reason why we shouldn't just, you know, open fire right now. That's all absolutely fine. And then we're just going to start nailing him. And uh, we're actually doing really well. Okay, I'm actually doing the damage. I'm actually hitting. This is, this is remarkable. Okay, well, this is, this is all marvelously good news. Right, just 
be ready. Because if this is anything like the apartments, there's going to be enemies behind every single bloody one of these doors. So make sure everyone's in, like, you know, a good position to start blasting. Right. Open and... Mana frag mine. Right. Well, mission, this one's yours. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's see what we're doing here. She can uh, disable or recover. I would like you to recover, please. So uh, get that up. And does that mean we've now got that, by the way? Yes, we appear to now be gathering mines. Gotcha. So if I want to set a basic mine, I need to be able to uh, roll 50. So I've got 10 in my demolitions already. So uh, then I just need to roll a 5 on a d20 to do it. But then again, if that was then 15 plus 10 to recover, that'd be 25. So... Uh, I should have already exploded if that was the case. Oh, I need to have more of a think about this. Let me know in the comments, because I suspect I've still not got this right. Ooh, I found a promised land journal. Oh, I'm guessing you're Malia. Are you Malia by any chance? You look like you might have been a Malia. I'm guessing you were a Malia. Sorry. And we've also got... Ooh. We've got a droid. I mean, a pseudo reason why not. Sure, I've got plenty of parts. So uh, get them up and running. And then I could optimise uh, weaponry, uh, targeting. Uh, it's going to take six parts to get in patrolling. I mean, go on, why not? I'm guessing there's going to be some bad stuff in here. So, uh, at the bare minimum, he's now going to be wandering about and helping me. So, uh, there you go, little droid. You have fun. You just, you know, go on your way. And we're going to be following him around. Uh, and he's going to be doing some lovely, lovely murder that we're going to be assisting with. It's going to be great. So, uh, where are you going, buddy? Would you like to go in here? Yes, you want to go in here. This is this is just great. So, in we go. And, uh, good morning, Elite. Okay, I'm guessing what's about to happen is I'm about to learn why people tell me I should be saving in this game more often than I am. Just to uh, see what we got here. Oh, there's way more than... Okay, so there's two elites and a chief in in here right now. Well, you know what? It's been fun. It's been a fun game. Thanks for joining me today. Let's just try and power attack them into next week. Can I actually get a shot at this guy? Yeah, just start like uh, opening fire on him. I've got a shot too. Just everything we've got on this guy. So go, 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 go. And then go over to him. Hayden. Okay, I mean, we're taking him down. A lot of fire is being laid on him right now. And then there's a house Caden doing. He's down to about half at the minute. So everybody at the back, concentrate your fire on him, if you'd be so kind. Uh, do I maybe want to put a grenade over there? No, because there's definitely splash damage. So bad to And the droid's kind of tanking for me, which is... Oh, flip me, we just took out the chief. Okay, I think we've actually got something that works. This is this is remarkable. And uh, a cardio regulator, whatever that is. Okay, fortitude saves at plus two. Okay, makes you a bit tougher against, like, you know, effects that are, like, physical. Like, say, presumably, knockdown, for example. Might be a good idea for, like, you know, Caden to have that, actually. Yes. Though, actually, he's already got an adrenaline amplifier, so that is uh, reflex saves. No, reflex is... Uh, that's your dexterity saves. You're already going to be good at that, so that's fine. Yeah, we'll give you one of them. Congratulations. And that means that you can have... Uh, do you actually need this stealth field generator? I don't know if you do or not, to be honest. I think you might be fine as you are. So, uh, maybe we ought to be giving you this instead. Because uh, we don't need you to go up ahead invisible. Because I can do that by myself. So, you can just have this instead. Okay, just very quickly check for corpses, because that robot is... He's just on his way. That robot is just doing its own thing at this point. Um, by the way, Caden, yeah, uh, give yourself a med pack, because... Yeah, the Ready. tempo of this is currently being set by all of this nonsense. So, getting over there... Oh! Look at this. This is one of those old-style manual locks. No computer codes or nothing. The sewers is the only place you can see one of these on terrace. You can't use conventional security spikes on these old locks. But don't worry. I've come across them before. I've rigged up a little device that should do the trick. I think the Gamorians might currently be... Oh! I've got a Wookiee! Okay, that was easier than I was expecting. So, uh, yes indeed. 
Zalbar is happy to see mission. Right, welcome to the team, you magnificent bastards. Oh, hang on, there's... I think the robot might have won the fight without me being there. And now he's getting on with... Okay, that robot is the true hero of this story. Because the robot is just going around and murdering everything. So, hello, Zalbar. I'm Bang Blitzman. You're going to be, like, you know, tanking for me from now on. Pleasure to meet you. And you know the language of my people. That's rare among your species. I'm impressed. Good. It's nice that we've got off on a nice, strong footing. Ah, oh, here we go. We've got a flipping life debt, which is... I mean, we haven't actually saved your life. I guess we did save you from slavery, yes. But, uh, okay. Fair enough. And, yeah, the robot has... The robot has murdered the flip out of that Gamorian at the back. So, yeah, he's happy. We have now got a life debt with him. Good. That means he can't naff off, no matter how much I annoy him. Oh, and I see. He's got a special, you know, thing against slavery. Because, yeah, there's been a lot of slavery on his home world. Okay, fair enough. Welcome aboard. So, I guess I still owe you one secret path into the Boca base. That was the deal, wasn't it? Don't worry. I know a backdoor into that scum den. Okay, so, yes indeed. Where are we going? Because the robot's getting, you know, itchy trigger fingers. It wants to go murder some more Gamorians. I better come with you. The Volkers put up a force shield to keep the sewer dwellers out. I'm one of the only non-Volkers on Terrace who can get you past it. I can't remember exactly how to get there, but I know it was somewhere here in the sewers. Over to the northeast, if I remember right. I just hope the Rancor monster isn't still there. Sorry. Rancor, like giant dinosaur thing in episode 6. Oh, that's... That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. Okay, so Zalbar is... Actually, he's he's officially a scout. That's... Oh, that's a concern. I kind of wanted him to be like, you know, a, a soldier. But, okay. You're coming into the party. And, Karth, sorry about this. You have to uh, stay back home because I need mission to open the door. And I'm going to be needing Zalbar to whack things with a big old whacking stick. Oh, Zalbar. Me and you, we're going to be friends. Please. Please have high strength. Please have high strength. Please have high strength. Oh, flip me. He's got 20 strength. And 20 constitution. Oh, he's got all the health in the world. Okay. Me and you, we can be friends. And he's not even a goody two-shoes. All right. He won't mind too much if I go down into the evil side. I've just realised Karth took all of his gear with him, which includes all of the good gear that we need to... Okay, so we need to go and track down Karth, because he took his stuff with him. And yeah, despite being very tough, very strong and a bit dexterous, not exactly on the smart side, are you? So as a result of that, I'm guessing we're not really using you for, for skills, are we? Then again, his awareness is actually pretty good. Okay, this is... And his repair solid. Flip me. A Wookiee repairman. Okay, now that could be... That could be interesting. Right there. Right, and speaking of which, let's uh, level you up, by the way. Skills. Uh, here we go, repair. So that is... Uh, oh, it's cheap. It's cheap for you to be good at repair. I'm guessing because you're a scout. So therefore, different classes uh, can upgrade things at a different rate. Oh, this is... This is marvellous. Okay, that's cheap. That's cheap as well. Oh my. Well, this is just, this is great. This is absolutely great. So, you don't really need to be good at awareness. Probably it's a better idea for you to be good at, uh, you know, skill points, that one's... Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, yes, treat injury going up, repair going up. We've got a repair man. Okay, now this is, this is beautiful. This is just great. Now, what are you actually... Uh, good at, my friend. You've got Flurry, which is, uh, I'm guessing, like, yeah, it's pretty much just a rapid shot, but with a sword. But arguably, it's a lot worse, because uh, if you're hitting someone, you're engaged in a duel. You're on the front line with them. You don't really want to be giving up defense when, you know, you're on the front line literally fighting. He's also got implants, so... Ah! We can plug stuff into his face. Great. Improved power attack, so uh, plus eight the next attack, but chance to hit is down. Okay, that's pretty good. He can do rapid shot, but we don't need to worry about that. That's obviously not what we're doing. He's also very good at melee. Excellent and uh, uncanny dodge. So, okay. Interesting. Plus two on saves versus grenades. Very specific, but whatever. And uh, 
Okay. I could make him good at dueling. To be honest, I feel like I want him to be good at dueling. Because, uh, yeah. Otherwise, we're putting him into uh, two-weapon fighting. I feel like that's not necessarily a good idea. No, I'm going to put you over to a dueling focus. I'm going to have a dashing, suave, dueling Wookiee leading the charge. It's going to be great. Ooh, and he's also got his own bowcaster that was in the chest in the next room together with our more cards. More flipping cards and uh, sonic grenades, frag grenades, concussion grenades. Those are the big ones right there. The concussion grenades. That's the good stuff. And that robot just absolutely annihilated you, didn't it? Right, okay. We need to get you set up. Um, Rust and Droid, uh, would you mind just, you know, hanging out here and... Mission's already leveled up again. Okay, that was... Wait, didn't I... Okay, she's just leveling up really fast. Got it. And yeah, even though it's a bit difficult for you, I probably wouldn't mind you having your compute usage up. So, demolitions. Uh, max that out. Do I need awareness? Because I'm pretty sure... Yeah, your Wookiee friend could also do awareness. Then again, you can max that really easily. Let's get compute usage uh, moving in the right direction. And uh, security repair. Screw it, that's absolutely fine. So get that going in the right direction too. Your feet as well. There's sneak attack three, so you've got that too. And yeah, if you're going to be a one-handed gun user, who's actually, you know, pretty good at nailing the shots because you're not using two attacks, then probably don't bother with sniper shot. I wouldn't mind you having Power Blast. That's actually been... That was pretty good for uh, for Caden. Or we could just give you Improved Dueling for plus two, plus two. No, I'm going to give you Power Blast. I think Power Blast is actually pretty solid for someone who's not on the front line. So you can now have that. That's all fine too. Okay, I'm liking... Uh, I'm liking the team. The team's actually sort of working at this point. This is, this is going to be marvellous. Now, admittedly, I'm not convinced that, you know, I want Mission in terms of uh, her actual combat ability. But as a support character, she's potentially going to be rather useful. Oh, apparently I can return to the hideout from here. I'm surprised, but okay. Caden, just give me the damn sword and no one gets hurt. And the bowcaster is also, yeah, that is a blaster rifle. Uh, one to ten, I assume. That's going to be two-handed, right? And it is actually upgradable as well. So I could put a scope on that. Nothing else. Gotcha. Actually, you know what? Mission actually does have a blaster proficiency. So, okay, I've got a plan. You can actually have, you know, the bowcaster. 1 to 10, plus 7 chance to hit. That's not bad at all. Plus, you know, that means you're using your best friend's bowcaster, which seems kind of nice. It does mean you're not getting the benefit of dueling, but I'd say it's worth it for the extra damage, given we don't have a good pistol to give you right now. Then we just give her the good armor, together with the reflex save, because she's more likely to be, you know, shot at, rather than, uh, you know, being engaged in hand-to-hand. -hand. Meaning, Zalbar, you can have, uh, yes, fortitude saves plus two, because you're likely to be, you know, at the front line, being whacked by all that stuff. And Prototype Vibroblade, doing between 9 and 18, with both the upgrades on it, one-handed, plus 12 chance to hit. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. Though we do need to get you some better armour, that's true. Oh, he's so massive! He's so damn tall next to the other characters, I love him! Okay, light battle armour is not light, it's medium, but it does give me a big defence bonus, but limited max dexterity, but his dexterity is not great, so I think that should be just fine. So, uh, that'd be good, uh, but I need to sell something to afford it. Here we go, handful of things sold, job done. Except, hang on, can you... Can you actually wear armour? Because, like, you're a Wookiee, and they have a habit of wandering around, like, you know, naked. Ooh, no he can't, because he doesn't have... Oh, he's... Yeah, I think he just prefers to be naked. I mean, I might be able to give him the specialisation in a feat at some point, but he's also got, uh... Wookie toughness. So uh, he just gains, uh, okay, damage reduced by two uh, and a plus two vitality points over and above what he would normally gain uh, through constitution. So, okay, he's probably going to be like less good in terms of uh, defense and whatnot, but he's got loads of health to offset that. So I'm sure it's fine. Okay, well, sooner or later, we will have a team member who enjoys wearing clothes. So when that does happen, we're going to be golden. But in the meantime, yeah, his defense is low. So uh, he is going to be getting hit, like, 
a lot next to us. A chance to dodge is nowhere near as good. I can see how uh, him not wearing armor is potentially a problem. Maybe we need to get some, like, you know, special Wookiee armor or something. Or maybe just, like, you know, the added vitality is supposed to offset the lack of armor or whatever. But, oh yeah, this is... Uh, this feels like the team. This feels like the team right here. I think we're flipping ready to go. Okay, time to see how well this guy does. Because, oh, I've got... I've got good feelings about this. The droid's just doing his rounds. That's all absolutely fine. The problem we do have is... Uh, presuming this door is locked and you physically can't do anything about it. Okay, so that's fine. I am a rogue and a thief. So just uh, get that open. And... Okay, we have got... Oh! Do not run at that thing. Don't run at it. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're going to let, you know, them run into it. Okay, um, how do I stop you guys engaging? Because I feel like we just need to let them run at it. Okay, never mind. Um, this is, they sort of, did they just run through it? They just ran through it. Okay, just start hitting them. That's absolutely fine. Because now I'm now I'm in precisely the situation I do not need to do not need to be in. Could someone please thank you? Right, okay. I've been a bit poisoned and we gotta do something about your breath. I didn't want to say anything, but it's bad. Worse than usual, which is hard to believe. In fact, now that I think about it, your breath has been pretty rancid ever since we rescued you from those Gamorian slavers. What'd they feed you, buddy? This feels like a very weird off-topic conversation that's a bit non-sequitur from almost dying to the monsters. But, uh, okay. And they didn't. Oh, I'm guessing you... Oh, dear. Did you did you have to eat other people by any chance? Are we making light of cannibalism? Or, like... Well, I guess it's not cannibalism if it wasn't, like, you know, actual other Wookiees. So, yeah, it took a chunk out of the arm of the guards that wandered too close. I mean, I'm surprised. Gamorians are basically like pigs. It would have tasted like, you know, bacon. Should have been delicious. Okay, now, as we were just failing to say, you just need to recover this mine right now. And if you kind of explode, that's fine. I mean, you seem to be doing a pretty good job at all of that. And then there's more corpses. Right, need to find... Oh, hang on. Sorry, I forgot about Malia. Um, so we've got yet more stuff, more medicine, etc. More skeletons, have some good stuff on them, absolutely love it. Just keep on keeping on, and this should loop back around to where we were. I'm guessing we got more... Okay, that's the back of your cell over there. That door's just sort of broken for some reason. And to prepare for more fighting, here we go. Alright, we got ourselves rat ghouls. So... Your job is just to get in over there and just, like, whack them in the face. All right. Our job is to, like, you know, start shooting them. So just get over there and start supporting. So now we just open fire and we just murder. And uh, if you'd like to get involved at any point, that'd be great. So obviously he's poisoned. But, like, that doesn't really matter so much. So let's just keep an eye on all this. And, uh, I mean, we're kind of just chopping through them here. He's just, he's annihilating them. He's just absolutely destroying them. And he just doesn't care about the poison. He just shrugs it off. This is... Uh, oh, yeah. This is the team. I'm guessing we're now looping around to uh, somewhere else. By the looks of the map, we're kind of uh, going back to where we were. And, uh, yeah, just start whacking them. And then you just start shooting them. And then there we flip in. We're just annihilating them. This is actually working. This is actually flipping. Oh, this is amazing. And now, yeah, the Wookiee's going over there. I just support and he's dead. Okay, now we've got it. Ooh, this looks good. We got special magic door, but let's not worry about that uh, just yet. Uh, mission, if you wouldn't mind getting yourself a bit unstuck. Uh, just, you know, we've... Mission. Mission, come on. Mission. There you go. Uh, get us some mines. Uh, if the detonate, that's like, you know, sad, but it's okay. You won't be able to get that computer to lower the energy fields unless you know the proper codes. Lucky for you... I've got them. I picked them off the pocket of a black vulgar who had a little too much to drink in the cantina one night. Here, let me get that energy field down for you. Alright, and with that we have got ourselves uh, the upper sewers. Okay, let's not worry about that just yet. Instead, I feel like we're onto a good thing where we are. So, uh, let's just check what's going on elsewhere in the sewers. There might be some good loot 
down going on. So we can find, like, you know, a really solid pistol. We might want to uh, move her over to that mission, I mean. So, okay. Just further and further down we go. Oh, Promised Land Journal. Yes, sorry, I already got one of them. Then I completely forgot it um, existed. Still, I've got two now, so that's nice. And uh, some more credits, some more med packs. The game's very generous with, uh, yes, when you're allowed to just uh, nip back home. Very, very generous indeed. I feel like you don't really need med packs much at all. So, uh, okay, Big Z, crack open the door. I feel like we're almost at the bottom here. And, uh, oh yeah, you flipping come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. And by the way, spoiler warning, you ain't. So pew, 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 murder, 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 murder. And, uh, oh, this is... This is just sad for the Gamorians, to be honest. And then uh, so many rolls in terms of attack. Down, you flipping go, you stupid losers. Big Z just won't die. He's just got like 10 million health points. He just will not flipping die. And there's also, there's a ladder here. So now I'm, oh bloody hell, I'm, um, this might be a bit much even for, uh, for Big Z actually. So, what we need to do now is... I think what we need to do now is actually run away. This is, this is not the right... Okay, um, you keep them busy, um, and you just, like, start blasting, like, as best you can. Mission, could you, like, get us out of here by, like, any chance? Yes, just, just go over there. Get, get, get us out of here, Mission. Okay, this was... That's not the right spot to, to come up. And again, maybe it is. I feel like no, actually. Let's let's not do have the rat ghouls regenerated in here. Because if so, I'm going to be very annoyed. Yes, I believe they have. But, okay, that means if I don't want to fight my way through this whole area again, I need to go out through here. But from here, I can go and heal myself up. So, okay, I think we could do this. Right, full magic heal, then teleport straight back to being trapped underground here. Let's go flipping murder some rat ghouls. I can handle this many, it's fine. Okay, out we come and admittedly there's already a little bit of not happy here. Right, you just start attacking that person. Mission's dead. I just need to get the flip out of dodge, get a bit of, you know, clean air going on. And now, okay, mission's gonna go down, but that's fine. Uh, so cancel all of this. Okay, just go for normal attacks, please. Go, 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 go. And now we're just going to start shooting. And uh, to be honest, I'm impressed. Mission's actually like, you know, uh, not dead. And... Okay, then she's then she's freaking out a bit. I think she's about to die of poison, by the way. But like, if she does, uh, she just pops straight back up again. Because like, you know, we're not in combat. Yep, there she goes. So she's fallen unconscious and then she's fine. Which is very peculiar, but there we go. In fact, hang on, has this actually brought me to... I think this has brought me to where the flipping, like, sample is, right? The beam splitter, med pack, heavy combat suit, rat ghoul serum! Okay, together with all sorts of other bits and pieces that I'm sure are very useful. Hang on, what am I, uh, what am I right now? What level have we, uh, what level have we reached here? I am at five, ready to go to six. I'm happy with six, that's fine. Oh, that's a bit of a boring level, that's nothing but skills, boo. Uh, still, I can keep my... Yes, Persuade needs to keep going up, as does Security. Max that out too. And then just keep my Stealth moving in the, uh, the right direction. Because then again, I feel like that's not really that necessary. But then do I need my Awareness instead? No, I'll go for my Stealth. I might want to do the odd bit of Stealthing about. Yes, very boring level as it turns out. Oh, never mind. Improved scoundrels. That gets me up to defense 23. That's pretty solid. And here we go. My two journals. So I've got two of them, but I can't actually, like, you know, read them. It's just half-completed maps, cryptic notes. So just people trying to figure out whether there is a promised land at all. But I can't understand it myself. And yeah, with Zalbar present, I'm now feeling very confident about just, you know, basically going wherever the flip I want, to be perfectly honest. Because, uh, yeah, as uh, Star Wars always says... Uh, you don't want to mess with a Wookiee. Yeah, you know what? Bring it on, you stupid losers. Okay, so that seems to be this side of the map cleared out. So I've now actually got the serum. I think there's a bit more. Yeah, there's something else over over there. But while I'm passing by the village, uh, Rukel. Oh no, I can't even just say, hey, here's some special stuff clearly related to your quest. 
I'm guessing we have to find her first then. Well, in that case, there's only really one more place she could be, because I'm pretty sure I've, yeah, gone through all the sewers. There's just this area over on this side. Oh, hello. Oh, it's Candorus. Hi, Candorus. Sorry. Didn't realize we were going to have another run in with you. So, oh, he's got troops with him. Oh, I like this guy. This guy, me and him can be friends, all right? Man's lord and he's actually got a big gun and friends too. Don't move. I'm, I'm not afraid to use this blaster if I have to. Settle down, kid. We've already lost enough men to those damn rat ghouls. The last thing we need now is more casualties from a needless firefight. Mm. By the looks of you, I'd say you're down here for the same reason we are. To salvage something from those downed Republic space pods. Let me give you some advice. Forget about it. Do yourself a favor and just head back from where you came. Alright, cool head of pragmatist liking you. Though, to be honest, I don't know if you saw the Wookiee. He's hard to miss, he's 10 feet tall. He can basically just murder anything, so I think we're golden, actually. Well, may as well help out as best we can while we're just, you know, all standing about here. No, not the flipping flurry. Bad call. So, just start uh, opening fire. Oh, yeah, your men... Your men seriously suck, don't they? They are, they're not good. So just dodge, murder. Oh yeah, flipping marvelous. Damn. I told Davik this salvage mission was a bad idea. His men aren't trained for this kind of thing, and I can't babysit them all. Okay, boys, we're getting out of here before I lose anyone else. I can't carry all this salvage back by myself. You'd be smart to get out of here as well. Even if you can handle the rat ghouls, I doubt there's anything worth finding anymore. Um, I'm looking for, like, the corpse of a crazy woman who believed in, like, the Garden of Eden or something. So I'm sure it's going to be fine. Don't worry, I'm just going to get on with it. It's okay. Yep, here we go. There's a handful of rat ghouls here. And once upon a time, that might have been a problem. But, uh, let's just say not so much, uh, anymore. Yep, cleared them out. And we have got yet another journal here. So, uh, hopefully... That was Malia. Well, not hopefully, because, like, you know, she's dead, so that'd be really sad. But I have now got what I assume is the right journal and a couple more journals on top. So that's got to be good news. Yep, dead apprentice. Here's a journal. It is as I feared, then. She joins the list of those who have given their lives in the service of our cause. But though I am saddened by this news, there is yet hope. By finding my apprentice, you have proved yourself worthy, Upworlder. You are to be the beacon on our path to salvation. You will guide us to the promised land. Okay, by any chance is that done by delivering you two more journals? Because if so, we are golden. The great city of Taurus covers the entire surface of this planet. There is no land to grow food. Kelp harvests and the creatures of the sea are our only food source. A century ago, rising levels of toxic pollution poisoned the oceans and famine swept the planet. The rich hoarded food for their own use and the poor were left to starve and die. But the poor rose up against this tyranny and civil war engulfed the planet. Millions died in the fighting and huge sections of Taurus were destroyed or abandoned. The rebellion was crushed in the end. Thousands were taken prisoner. The jails could not hold them all, and so the practice of banishing all prisoners to the Undercity was born. Okay, so this makes a bit of sense. When Caden said once upon a time the city's golden days are behind it, yeah, they literally couldn't feed themselves. So I'm guessing the population used to be a lot higher. Now, yeah, huge amounts of it are just abandoned, because... I assume they trade for food, but having gone through that level of calamity, they couldn't afford to, you know, have the entire place be fully occupied, hence why it's a bit on the empty side. Legends tell of a self-sufficient colony founded just before the famine and lost during the Civil War. A paradise beneath the Undercity, where droid servants tend to every need. For many years, I searched for the promised land, just as my grandfather and father did before me. When I became old and gray, my apprentice continued the search on my behalf. I have collected many clues hinting at its location. The journal of my apprentice provides yet more information, but still, there are too many pieces missing from this puzzle. But I know my father and grandfather each had journals where they recorded their own discoveries. 
Perhaps with their journals, I could at last uncover its hidden location. Okay, well, I've actually got those, but to be honest, I'm not convinced it's going to be real. Because if you were just looking for, like, you know, a bit of space by the beach where there's some kelp, where you can see the sky, yeah, thumbs up, good call, just, like, walk over there and find it. But magic-free town with robots that just serve your every need, not convinced that's going to be there. But, uh, sure, here you go. Can it be true? Is it possible that at long last, the dream of my father and grandfather before him will be fulfilled? I, I can hardly bear to look. Hmm. Yes, yes, of course. Now I understand. It all makes sense. Now I see why the promised land has been so hard to find. It is so obvious. You have done a great thing, Upworlder. A selfless act that will bring great joy to all the people of this village. I must take this to Gandar right away. Frukil, what do you want now? Have you more fables of a hidden paradise just waiting for us to find it? You may not think these are fables after you see what I have brought you, Gandar. Look at these journals! What? No, it can't be. Are these real, Rukil? Is this information accurate? I swear to you, everything in these journals is true, Gendar. The Promised Land. I told you I would find it. The entrance is far from here, Rukil. It will take us weeks to get there, perhaps even months. And we will have to cross many Rakul-infested areas. I do not deny the journey will be hard, Gendar. But surely it is better than the miserable life we have here. Wise words, Rukil. Our supplies are high right now. We could leave by nightfall. I will tell the others to prepare for the journey. Thank you once again, Upworlder. I will say a final goodbye. For where we are going, I fear you cannot come. The journey to the Promised Land is long and arduous. Okay, um, I know this feels like it might have been the right thing to do, but like, just taking a slightly more pragmatic view, I suspect I've condemned all these people to die chasing false hopes. So I feel like I deserve dark side points for this. The journey will take many, many weeks, and those who make the journey cannot return. That was the final secret of the Promised Land. When the colony was created, it was designed so that people could enter willingly, but they could never leave again. This was to ensure secrecy on the project. We must part ways here, Upworlder. I sense your destiny is yet to be chosen, but the destiny of my people is at the end of the long journey ahead of us. Sorry, a secret town full of robots where everybody who goes never leaves, which is supposedly by choice, but oh, they're dead. They're all dead. They are so 100% dead. Well, I've kind of cleared out the village. Um, did we lose the, um, the trader as well? Did he go with them? Okay, well, I'm glad I bought the gun before he went. Otherwise, that would have been a bit of a loss, wouldn't it? Though this does raise the question, what happened to the two people back over... Okay, they're just gone. They either murdered them or took them along. So that's nice, I guess. Oh, bloody hell, we're getting right into light at this point. No, 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 no. There's only there's only one solution to this. Oh, and en route, Mission wants to start revealing her tragic backstory. Big Z's my family, you know? My parents, well, I guess they're dead. It was just me on my own until the day I saw Zalbar in the lower city. I could tell right away he was in trouble. This was before the gang wars were out of hand. But even then, the Volkers were scum. A few of them were hassling Big Z, trying to pick a fight, but he wasn't looking for trouble. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, who'd be dumb enough to pick a fight with a Wookiee, and how precisely were you able to, uh, to help with that? Hey, nobody said the Volkers were smart, but there were three of them. So, maybe they figured they could handle him. I don't know. Anyway, I don't like the Volkers at the best of times. And when I saw them picking on this poor Wookiee, all alone on a strange planet, overwhelmed by the big city, I just lost it. I screamed out, leave him alone, you poor slimes, and charged right at them. Well, one of them saw me coming and slapped me so hard he just about knocked me cold. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm guessing that, uh, yeah, Zalbar was not thrilled uh, by seeing a kid getting slapped about. Hey, don't treat me like I'm a little girl. I ain't no kid. I'm 14 years old. Those Volkers didn't scare me. They're nothing but cowards. 
I knew how to deal with them. Of course, I never got the chance. I guess Zalbar didn't like seeing me get smacked around. He let out this howl and yanked that Volker a meter up off the ground and held him there by his throat. Okay, so yes, that's how you became friends. Gotcha. Are you kidding? Big Z ain't like that. He's just a big old softy inside. Of course, the Volkers didn't know that. The other two screamed and ran off. Can't say I blame them. The first time you see an angry Wookiee up close, it isn't a pretty sight. I thought Zalbar was gonna rip that punk's arms off and beat him to death with his own fists. The Volker was so scared, he fainted. Or maybe it was Big Z's breath just knocked him out. <coughs> Sorry, Zalbar, but I keep telling you to brush those choppers once in a while. Why do you think I won't stand downwind when you're talking? Anyway, I knew those Volkers would be back with friends, so I grabbed Zalbar and we took off. Ever since then, we've been a team. We look out for each other, you know? And yeah, how did Zalbar end up on Taris in the first place if he was a bit like, you know, overwhelmed by the whole experience like he wasn't expecting to be here? He was fleeing some kind of trouble back on Kashi. That's all I know, really. Big Z doesn't like to talk about it. In case you didn't notice, he's the strong, silent type. Doesn't much matter to me, though. I accept him for what he is, not what he was. Me and Zalbar like to live in the present. Okay, so we've got ourselves another tragic backstory, gotcha. Ooh, and one more thing, mention of a brother. My brother's a touchy subject, you know. It just so happens, I don't really feel like talking about him right now. Nothing personal. Let's just get back to the business plan, okay? Oh, never mind, she's got a bloody tragic backstory too. So, let's be 100% clear here. Alright, the vial of Rat Ghoul Serum I'm holding, that is not the only vial. Alright, this is not some special thing in the slightest. We know for a fact they were mass producing it at the Republic base. So much so, they're just handing it out to all the Sith patrols. Sith patrols that are being killed on the regular. So, as far as I'm concerned, if I was to hand over this one sample to, you know, the crime boss who's willing to pay me very well for it, then... That is not a bad thing, though the game will probably think it is, because I really need to offset this bloody light side I keep going towards. Oh, and even better, yeah, I'm going to be wanting 1,500 credits, actually. And 1,500, that is worth screwing over the planet. And on top of that, Davik is going to like me. So when the time comes, maybe I can, you know, get hold of the uh, ship a little bit easier. And back towards the center. Good, 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 good. Grey Jedi, no glowy cloud of righteousness. In fact, I'm going to drop some of this money on some better cards. So more Pazak cards. Uh, there's a minus four. Any more plus or minuses? There's some, uh, there's some good plus or minus ones. Sure, why not? Okay, you know what? Time for a flipping rematch. Time for some revenge. And now the majority of my deck is plus or minus. This has got to work out better. Oh, now this is the stuff. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So now I can start flipping to be plus or minus. Okay, we got this. We're going to be golden. So 8, 4, over to uh, 14. And now I can take the gamble. Because if I get a full 10, I can just play uh, the minus 4. All right. And uh, you see, 24. But don't worry. That's now a 20. Screw you. And... Uh, I've won a set. Oh, flip me. We're on it. We're on it right now. We're going to win. Okay, up to 9 and then 11 again. I can safely gamble because I can go down minus 1. He is now stopped at 19. Okay, I'm at 15. 22, I could get down. So anything between 1 and 8, I'm golden. If I put the plus 3, I still lose. So I need to take the gamble. But odds are on my side. And, oh my goodness, what's uh, what's this? What's this? Have I just got 20? Oh, am I 2-0 up? Am I 2-0 up with two plus or minuses ready to go? Oh, no, this is... This is the stuff. My revenge. My revenge is at hand, damn it. Give us a 10. Oh, flip me. There's a plus one. 20. And... Uh, are we going to just sweep him? Come on, we're going to sweep him. Oh, he managed to tie it. He managed to tie it, but I've still got a plus or minus and he's running out of cards. Uh, come on. Come on. This is... This is going to be my victory. 15's a bit dangerous, but with the option of a minus one, the odds are still on my side. Uh, 
And he's as likely to bust as me. 22, darn it. Well, I can't fix that, so I may as well stand. Okay, opponent wins the set. 2-1, oh no. We can't lose this now. This was going so well. This was going so damn well. Right up to the point where it wasn't. And 9, keep going, maybe he'll bust himself. 19. 16 is a really dangerous place to be if I get a low enough card, yeah. Anything between 1 and 5, it's 50-50 whether I win. I win. I've won a game of Pazark. I've won! You did well in our last match, but I think your luck may be about to run out. So do you want to play again? No, I am now the undisputed Pazark champion of the world. Screw you, goodbye. Oh, and Mish is just in a hurry to get caught up with me. Fine. Uh, mysterious tragic backstory, brother. Let's get into that nice and quick. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Tars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in a Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? Ah, wherever you came from, it was a lot worse than here, which uh, certainly is saying something. I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Oh, I kind of assumed, yes, you were sad, tragic refugees, but maybe your brother was just a bastard who kind of ruined both of your lives. But I'm not going to say that until I've got, like, you know, enough evidence one way or the other. So, uh, yeah, could you be a bit more specific about the sort of problems he did have? He gambled and drank and... He was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. Showed me how to slice into a computer security system. How to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes. And how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Okay, yes, it does rather sound like he might have been a bit of a bastard. Hey, you don't know what it's like. You need those skills here in the lower city. Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. He promised me he would. Alright, I guess we just have to wait and see uh, where this plot goes. But, yeah, where is he uh, these days? He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. Oh, okay. So uh, he fell into an even worse crowd than he, you know, just was himself. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure this story's gonna end well for him or you. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subject's closed as far as I'm concerned. If I'm gonna be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Okay, we'll catch up on the rest of this in ten and a half minutes. It's gonna be great. Well, in which case, I'd say there's only one thing left, which is, yes, the upper sewers and, um, uh, the promise of... Uh, a rancor. So, okay, I may have slightly screwed over a small undersea society and everybody else too, but on the plus side, I've got a Wookiee who seems to be functionally invincible, and I'm rich. Like, really rich. Like, so rich. And that's the important thing in the end, because I was getting a little bit too goody two shoes there. All right, need to be shooting force lightning out of my hands when the option becomes available. So I need to start doing some dickish things. And if some dickish things get me 1,500 caps, well, I'm not going to say no. So join me next week, ladies and gentlemen, as I try and figure out who wins a one-on-one -on -one scrap between Zalbar and Rancor. Because I'm willing to put 10 credits right now on Zalbar. So hopefully you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you very much and goodbye. Wait, wait. And flamethrower! 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 Okay, so this is... This is definitely morally questionable. The point where you start singing the flamethrower song, potentially, you've gone over the line.